Good morning, Integrity Church and friends. We are so glad you have joined us today online. And I want you to know that you are truly missed here at Integrity. And the rumors are true. We are going to be here May 31st in the sanctuary. We have made preparations. We have made spacing. We have, we are making cleaning very important. So we are looking forward to you being with us here next Sunday. But if you choose to be with us online, that is totally fine. And we will look forward to seeing you online. Well, today you can uh, fill out your online connect card and you can find that on the Integrity app. And you can go to our search Integrity Church Burlington and you shall find that. Also, you can send in your prayer request, and we would love to know that you are there. So please send this stuff in. And you also, uh, on this morning, we will have um, the church open from 1145 to 1245, and there will be people here if you would like to come and pray. And they will be here um, to pray with you. Please, um, please enjoy um, this set and we have, we're just ex pumped and excited about this music set today because we're so excited about just being able to meet together uh, next Sunday. We love you. We send you our love and hugs and we just welcome you. Thank you for being with us. Oh 
there's no greater statement than God that saves. We've been looking at the life of Peter, and Peter would probably say the same thing. There's no greater statement than the God that saves. His life echoed that statement from failure to redemption. Peter was the one who followed Jesus closely, denied him, but was redeemed and felt very strongly that God rescued him in the midst of his darkest days. Lord, we thank you for being that God that saves. Lord, in a time where there's not a a lot that's reassuring or steady. Lord, you are the rock to which we can hold on to and the one who never changes and we're so thankful. Lord, I pray that today we would hold tight to that redemption and grace that you offer us. We thank you for that reassurance that you give us. And it's in your holy name.
been lifted Grace is waiting The tents like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Hi, Integrity family. This is Bud. Uh, we're uh, here in what looks like a probably an unusual situation, right? Uh, you're, not, you're not used to tuning in on YouTube or Facebook and seeing this. Well, we're going to do something this Sunday, today, that's a little fun. And um, so we've been in this series called Jesus Through the Eyes of Peter now for a number of weeks. And we're going to wind it up here next weekend on the 31st. And uh, we, and, but I wanted to do something like this. I, I wanted to have some of my friends and, uh, to kind of talk about their favorite Peter stories. And so with that, I'm going to introduce my friends in, in just a couple of minutes. But I, I want to just encourage you to take a look um, on our app at the notes. You can find those notes uh, on our app, go to the sermon se se uh, section and go to sermon notes, and they'll be there. You want to take some notes, you want to just freelance, take notes, whatever you want to do, because we're just going to converse and talk about uh, this guy, Peter, because he was one of the most fascinating characters in all the scripture. We all agree with that, and uh, we sort of all have our, we're fans, right, in many ways. And, uh, and so we just want to kind of share that with you. So uh, as we do this, I want you to kind of engage with us. Feel free uh, to send us any questions that you might have that something we might say uh, might come up with. We may not agree on everything, right? We have different points of view, uh, and I kind of know that. We all know that. But uh, you might have some thoughts, too, that you might want to send us on Facebook, uh, through email, text, whatever, and uh, we can talk about those at some point in time uh, after today. So, uh, again, thanks for being with us. I want to encourage you uh, if you're one of our regulars, to go ahead and fill out that Connect card, or everyone, it doesn't matter, everyone listening today can fill out this Connect card. It's on our church app, Integrity Church Burlington, which you can find at any of the app stores. Go to where it says Connect, and there is that online Connect card. Let us know that you're here with us and you're watching uh, today, today's service. So, uh, so with that, let me introduce you to my friends. Um, ladies first, right? I'm going to go there, and we'll find that's the way we're going to work today. Uh, many of you know our own Christy Johnson, who's been with us at Integrity now for how many years? Almost three on staff, but I've been here for seven. Okay, seven years. We count seven, three in our full-time staff world. Uh, Christy uh, is just a great worker, does a lot of different things, she has her undergrad from Liberty University, and she is starting her master's degree there uh, here really soon, right? Correct. And, of course, she works on staff here, right? Absolutely. So let me introduce you also to Marshall Bullard. Many of you who might be uh, in our student population or among the parents, you may know Marshall. Marshall's done some teaching already for our students, right? Uh, about a three- or four-week series. Uh, once this revised rhythm time frame started, right, you did some videos for us. 
and that was cool. So tell us what you do professionally. Now, you have your undergrad uh, from Liberty University. That's correct. And that was in? In biblical studies. Biblical studies, right. and your master's also? It's in religion, yep. Religion, all right. So professionally, you do, you do some crazy stuff, so go yeah. ahead. All right. Well, I hope it's not too crazy, but so uh, I have the privilege to serve the community uh, in regard to insurance. So I uh, work uh, as an agency manager for North Carolina Farm Bureau, mm -hmm. uh, manage the office in Graham, and so just very thankful to have the opportunity to do that yeah. and uh, work with many of the folks in Alamance County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not all you do. You're also... <laughs> You and your wife run Faith Christian Academy. Yeah, it's, hard, it's hard for me to take credit for that, though. I just serve on the board of directors, and I'm, and I'm a mouthpiece for Faith Christian Academy. Let's, there you let's go. be clear about that. So my yeah. wife, Carmen, uh, serves as the principal there, and she is the engine that makes that vehicle move. Yeah. So, yeah. And you also pastored for a number of yeah, years. Yeah, I've been bivocational since 2002, Yeah. Uh, you know, serving in the ministry. Uh here and abroad, mm -hmm. um, here in the States, uh, in Las Vegas, I helped uh, with a church plant there mm -hmm. uh, back in 2002, 2003. I've worked with um, local pastors in Kenya uh, and still do uh, through an organization called Mission Link International mm -hmm. out of Charlottesville, Virginia, and still mm -hmm. very, very much involved uh, with a lot of work going on there, cross-cultural yeah. church planning, uh, been involved. Uh, with a pastor, and there, uh, we have uh, over six churches we've planted there, um, uh, a school school in the slums of Nairobi, Kenya, the Korogocho slums, uh, cool place, we ought to go there sometime, but 750,000 people in two square miles. Two square miles. Korogocho wow. is Kiswahili for a crowded shoulder to shoulder, so, uh, but it's uh, just, uh, we, we have a school there with over 400 children through uh, kindergarten through eighth grade. Neat, so, man, that's yeah. awesome, and you, and you started a church here. Uh, yeah, started and a church here. That. Yeah, pastored here uh, back in 2007, and mm -hmm. uh, just uh, really uh, felt the Lord leading us here to integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, I don't know. I'm all confused on time with this. Yeah, it's okay. You know, everything with the COVID. Right. But, yeah. No, you know, I get it. Just not too long ago. So that kind of the end of the year, first this year. We uh, felt the Lord telling us that too. So <laughs> you were obedient. So that's good. Uh, my other friend is Kevin Jordan. Uh, Kevin and his lovely bride Kimberly we're part of the founding group uh, for Integrity Church and that's pretty cool and now we're back together and uh, all that good stuff Kevin a uh, longtime friend uh, for so many years uh, has his uh, Pensacola Christians where he received his undergraduate degree and he diverted a little bit from the rest of us uh, with his graduate work he got his uh, master's in chemistry from UNCG so Kevin tell us about what you do these days vocationally my friend Nothing with chemistry. Um, <laughs> I was in the process of eliminating careers. That was what my college was all about. Um, now, uh, I run um, and part of a small appraisal, real estate appraisal firm uh, in Graham, Main Street Appraisals, um, and have had the privilege of doing that for the past 18 years. Um, it's a busy little firm. Uh, get, yeah. have the opportunity to work with my father, my father-in-law, and my son-in-law. There you go. So, <laughs> so it's a family business in more ways than one. Right. Um, yeah, and then, of course, my uh, uh, wife runs Converge Coffee Bar and Cafe, and I'm part of that. And so yep. you know, that's what we do. Good stuff. Anyway, love to, love to hear your stories. So, uh, so Peter, a pretty fascinating guy. We all agree, right? Good and bad. All, and and we're, let's talk about the good and the bad as we do this, right? So Christy, ladies first, as I said, uh, let's let's start out by you sharing your favorite story, your favorite Peter story. Okay, so when we just started discussing Peter, Peter's always been one of my favorites. And when asked this question by you, mm -hmm. I, I struggled for a little while to figure out exactly where I would go with, with this because I see Peter as a character that I relate to in a lot of different ways. But... Now, that could be good or not so good, right? Yeah, it could be. His impulsiveness is probably one of my struggles. Yeah. And I relate to that in a, in a big way. But um, I think the beauty of uh, my favorite story is his redemption story. Okay. And, right. and that's the way I look at it. I look at it as, as Peter's moment where um, he, he finds himself in a very low place. Mm -hmm. And he has to make a choice. 
And mm-hmm. again, we go back to that passage that we've talked a lot about in the series, and that's in John 21, mm-hmm. where, you know, he's, he's trying to figure out what to do. He knows that Christ has risen, but he hasn't seen him. Right. Yeah. And so he goes to fill his time with what he knows what to do, and that's to fish. And, and that's one of the things that we don't readily realize, that first of all, Jesus' appearances to the disciples during that time after the resurrection, very few and far between in those 40 days. Right. And, and not, it wasn't like all the disciples were there every time he appeared either, right? Right. And I think what's cool is Peter knows because he saw the empty tomb. Yeah. But yet he has yet to see the Savior, and he's still sitting in what I would say was a, a really bad decision on his part in the yeah. denial. One yeah. of the decisions I'm sure he just lamented mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. And he knows at some point, and I guess hopes at some point, he'll see the Savior. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't know how to process that Yeah, I, and in his humanness and his form. Well, in this series, you know, we were talking about John 21. I've kind of avoided the question because I don't know the answer. I'll see if any of you guys have any ideas on this. And if you don't, that's okay, because I don't know if there is anything definitive. How long do we think after the resurrection did this John 21 event occur, where they were out fishing because they didn't have anything else to do, right? They come upon the shore, they see Jesus, and you know, Peter jumps out of the boat. We don't really know, do we, how close this is to the resurrection and then to the ascension. We don't know. I don't think, do we? I mean, Marcia, anything you know of, Kevin? Any thoughts on that? I mean, it's got to be long enough for them to walk back from Jerusalem to the Sea of Galilee. Yeah, that, that, mean, that's so, a little bit of a journey, right? Yeah, I mean, right? so it's not like it's a couple hours. I mean, it's, you're talking days here, yeah. yeah, at least. And I guess 40 days, all this stuff happened within 40 days, and there's a few of them right, right there. And then that's the last story, really, that, that John tells. So we can assume probably that it's toward the end of that 40-day period. So, so, I mean, what about the what about the where Peter was, Christy? I mean, what do you? How would you do? You, you said downcast or something like that. You used um, what emotions would? It, it, he's down, yeah. But but what? Get a little more specific with that, if you can, with regard to what drove him to this place. Well, I guess thinking about that, looking at. He's probably, what am I going to say? Am I going to get the chance to explain myself? Can I explain myself? Um, you know, what, what does this look like for me? Is, mm-hmm. there, is there redemption for myself? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I denied who he was. And I knew, but yet I chose to deny it anyway. Yeah. And so I'm sure in some part I wonder if, and this is just, again, me wondering, I wonder if the fishing was, I can get my mind off of things. Right. I don't want to, I don't want to ponder on it anymore. That sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Fishing, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have those things we turn to when we don't want to face our questions. That's a good point. Yeah. Didn't, it was kind of withdrawal, right? Some people yeah. self-medicate through a number of different things. Absolutely. Some people just self-medicate through withdrawal from things, Right. Right. And even if it wasn't, you know, that, it was just, I've got to get away. Mm-hmm. I've got to think about things. And I look at the disciples and, okay, we'll do the same thing. Yeah. And so they go with them. Again, it's something that's familiar. Yet again, only like six went with him, I think, mm-hmm. right, in this story, right? And I so, think that's right. And uh, so not everybody, again, was there. Kevin, how about your story? Yeah, this one, you know, kind of comes to the end. What, what, are you, what do you like? Um, well, when, but when you ask this question, uh, the first story that comes to my mind is Peter's denial. And if you look at that night, of that last night that he's with Christ, you know, you see this whole, whole arc of a story of failure. <laughs> yeah. You know, right off the bat, you know, he's going, Christ, I'm going to be with you till the end. I don't care if the rest of these guys abandon you. I'm going to be there. And then Christ goes, well, come with me and pray. And they go to the garden and pray. And what does Peter do? Well, with the rest of them, he falls asleep. Uh-huh. Then the next thing, the next scene you see is they come and 
to get Christ. And what does Peter do? He whips out a sword and gets chastised by, by Jesus for trying to defend him. And then the last thing you see Peter do is go and deny Christ. And yeah. he doesn't just deny him once. He denies him three times. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he is... And he is insistent in his denial. Hmm. And you go, why is that your favorite story? Well, <laughs> you know, I just relate to Peter a lot because you see Peter in all of his humanness. Yeah. You see him because he's a brash person. Yeah. He's a zealous person. Yeah. He is like, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. And in that story, you see hum how our humanness fails us every time mm, yeah you, you know yeah he had good intentions he did he his did good intentions mm. failed him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his intentions was i'm i am going to stick with you christ until the very end that was yeah. his intentions i don't believe he was saying that and didn't believe it i think he truly believed that he was going to be there till the end yeah and it's interesting that the only one that was there to the end was john yeah. Yeah. true John yeah. was at the foot of the cross, and because John's there till the end, Christ bestows on him the greatest honor of taking care of his earthly mom. That's a great point. And you know, I think when you think of your, when you think of your story, you know, Peter's sitting there going, "I failed. Right. I could have been there till the end, and I wasn't." Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's got to be playing in his mind. So you see that failure of good intentions. I also think, you know, our passion. We yeah. can be passionate about something. And even our passion will fail us because Peter was passionate. He was known as a zealot at that time. I yeah. mean, he was, when he got onto a cause, he got onto a cause, I mean, till the end. And he's the one who whips out the sword. He's the one who tries to defend Jesus right there. And, but it's interesting that the person he tries to defend Jesus against is the only person in that band who's not armed, and that's the servant the servant of the thing. He doesn't go after the soldiers. He doesn't go after the guys with the clubs. He doesn't go after the guys with the swords. He goes after the guy who was sent as an observer, just the <laughs> servant of the high priest. He's the one that Peter goes after. <laughs> Christ is like, put the sword away, man. <laughs> and the last thing I yeah. see, Peter, you no, know, his yeah, you failure, his humanness, his promise. He made a promise to Christ. I will be there till the end, yeah. and that failed him. Yeah. And so many times in my own life, you know, I, I just think I have a passion, I have a goal, I, you know, I even, I have good intentions, I make a promise to myself, and if I, you know, in my own power, in my own humanness, it fails me. Yeah. How many times have we had good intentions? Just on something, just think about just on weight loss or something, or yeah. I'm not going to eat that cookie or something, you know. And, we eat the cookie. And we eat the cookie. <laughs> and Christ talks about that because he says... The spirit, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You may have good intentions. Yeah. You may be passionate. You may have zealous. You know, you may be zealous about something, but it'll fail you because of the flesh. And, and he said that right after, right after they went to sleep on him, right? Oh, I yeah. mean, yeah, that was right that's there. Where he the, said that. Peter yeah, he saying, said the spirit may be willing, but the flesh is weak, guys. Yeah. 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 I, I'm warning you that if you try to do kingdom work in your human, out of your humanness, wow. you will fail. Yeah. He's a perfect example. I want to ask, Marshall, I want to ask you, but I want to ask Kevin first. I want to ask you too. But Kevin, how do you think the disciples looked at Peter? Uh, what, do you, what do you think they saw? I mean, what was their attitude toward him, the others? Well, I, I think they saw Peter as a big talker. Yeah. But I also think they saw him as, hey, a guy that will jump into the fray. Yeah. I mean, if we remember, we go back to... Peter's the only one who says, when Christ is walking on the water, Peter's the only one who says, hey, Christ, if that's you, call me to you. He was the one who was willing to ask the question yeah. and then go do it. You know, Of all the disciples, Peter's the, Peter and John are the only two that follow Christ to, the, to, to his trial. Mm -hmm. The rest of them run. Good point. You know, he's the second Peter to was, last one to run. And Peter was definitely in the vicinity, right? Because oh, yeah. he was everybody was gathered around watching all the proceedings on Jesus. Yeah. And and it's interesting that this is a story that's repeated four times in the gospel. One mm -hmm. of the few that's going to be repeated, mm -hmm. you know, in John and in the synoptic yeah. uh, gospels. So you know, and the gospels of course are written by the other disciples and you know, so I mean, I think that they are 
they respected him, mm -hmm. but they also knew that, you know, that <laughs> he was going to, he, he failed. Did he, did he, did he ever get on their nerves, Marshall? What do you think? How did the, the other disciples, I mean, did he annoy them? I mean, you know, what do you, you think? Know, I know he, I think, but what do you think? Yeah, well, you know, he's always out front, right? Yeah. And, and like many of us, you know, we can at times get ahead of God, right? Yeah. And um, I think. I think he had a tendency to do that, although I have to agree with Kevin, to your point, I really believe that, that these other disciples looked to him as a leader. He, he had those qualities. They were innate. They were God-given, right? Yeah, and so right. I think they definitely looked at him, and you can see that uh, he was going to be a leader very early on, and even you know throughout the, the story with Peter in the Gospels, and even the Mount of Transfiguration, and mm -hmm. you know, but he's all the time trying to, to get out in front and tell Jesus how things are going to be to yeah. the point where Jesus, even in after the passage I'm going to talk about today, tells him at one point, "Get behind me, Satan." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, your right. your 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 thoughts are on uh, you know man's agenda, not on God's. You know. <laughs> But that, but that, isn't that same thing, Kevin, where he said, get thee behind me, Satan, and what you're talking about, isn't that kind of what kind of stayed in his nature that led him to some of this stuff that you're talking about, that led to the need for what Christy is talking about, right? It's that, that's sort of a common theme, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, his personality was definitely one that I want to be out front, I'm going to be a leader, I'm going to be passionate about whatever I touch. Yeah. And, you know, without being tempered by the Holy Spirit, without the redemption that Christ offered, yeah. you know, in that fallen state, in that humanness, mm -hmm. you know, that can have a tendency to put you in a position where you're spouting off things that you shouldn't be spouting off about. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about things that you shouldn't be talking. You're, you're trying to manipulate people to do what you think they should be doing. No, come on uh, now. Yeah. Do we really do that? Come on. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to. We're all up here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so I, I think that that's the case. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think that one of the things, I, I, I get what you guys are saying, and you make a really good case for the idea that they really saw him as a leader, and I think you're probably right. Yeah, I, I, I buy that. I can imagine, though, that through your journey to get to that point, there was a lot of scruffs that he probably had with the other disciples, right, before, before he, they, they did respect him. You know? Well, you got to see that the, that the three that end up at the top that Christ kind of pulls out of the 12, yeah. two of them are named the Sons of Thunder, and then there's Peter. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about probably between those three. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that going on, right? There's probably a lot of that going on. <laughs> Marcel, how about your favorite story, buddy? So my favorite story is uh, in Matthew chapter 16, and it's a passage, verses 13 through 18. Um, and... You know, there are a couple things that come out of this that really stand out to me. And everything we've talked about up in this point, uh, my son is a Christian rap artist. And early on, when I started introducing him to Christian rap, one of his favorite artists was Andy Minio. And he's he's gotten pretty, pretty high up in the Christian uh, rap music industry. And one of my favorite songs by Andy Minio is You Can't Stop Me. Have you ever heard that song? But one of my favorite lines in that song is this. He says, my biggest enemy is me. And even I can't stop me. Uh, you know, yeah. and the point is, you know, just like P, uh, Jesus told Peter, he says, look, Peter, he says, Satan intends to sift you, but I prayed for you, you know. And so I, I love this story in chapter 16 of Matthew, mm -hmm. because I think it speaks to that just about better than any other. Yeah. Um, and, and the, the premise is simply this. Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And they say, you know, some of, you, some of them say you're John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he says, who do you say that I am? Mm. And Peter, in true fashion, he jumps right out. And he says, you're the Christ. You're the anointed one. You're the son of the living God, right? And Jesus' response is, blessed are you, Simon, son of John, mm. because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father yeah. who's in heaven yeah. and then he goes on in verse 18 he says uh he says you're peter and upon this rock i'm going to build my church and guess what the gates of hades will not stand against it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are two things that i i look at in this passage that that stand out i mean there's so many things when you're talking about the the life of peter 
um, and even in this passage, but two things that stand out. One is our blessing is always based on God's revelation. Mm. All right. The second thing is God's revelation is also our invitation to join him in his work. Yeah. All right. The mm. first one, um, our blessing based on God's revelation, Peter's favored or blessed in this passage, not because of anything he's done, but because God's revelation to him, right? right? And the blessing and favor of God is not something that's learned or ascertained through any other means than God's revelation of himself, right? And so we're not favored or blessed based on what we do for God, rather what he's done for us. In this particular setting, is sending Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us. That through him, right, that we become the righteousness of God. And so the revelation to Peter is that his, nor our efforts, right, would ever get us to the place of being right in God's eyes. Because God views mankind through the eyes of the law, and no one could or can uphold the law fully. But guess what? Jesus did. Yeah. He can, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, remember, he said he didn't come to abolish the law, right, but, but to fulfill, fulfill it, it yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He's the Messiah. The only way for us to be righteous in the eyes of God is through Christ, mm -hmm. right? The Son of the living God. That's what Peter is confessing and agreeing with here when he makes that statement, you are the Son of the living God. Right? Yeah. You're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so he's confessing that, agreeing with that, and then he's going to go on and be involved in God's work and proclaim that, right, in Acts. And he's going to do that not only in Jerusalem to the Jewish people, but also remember in Acts 8 with Philip in Samaria, and then to Acts 10, Cornelius and the Gentiles, right? And so he, it's amazing to me how this blessing and favor from it's, it's all about what God has done, yeah, right? Yeah. And he's doing that simply to involve us in his work. And, and the thing about it is, Marshall, it gets me, is it's obvious that, that Peter could have been a guy who would have been tied to tradition, right? I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think we have any evidence that he was like into the temple worship and all that stuff necessarily. I mean, right. we don't know how, we don't know anything about his life before he was called right to the to that to that ministry uh, with his disciple, but um, he did. I mean, he he when Jesus asked him, he went straight to the the new answer, right, which is the new theology that that Jesus was presenting, right. He laid it out there uh, when maybe some of the other disciples they that might have been revelatory to them as well. What he said is that yeah. possible? Yeah, I, I believe so because. Again, I think, you know, the premise in the context bears that out here yeah. uh, because what we have to remember is, you know, we're in we're in first century Jewish culture here. Right. 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 We are in the throes of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and in that context, what did they t the things you do make you right with God? Right. That was the premise of their teaching. And what he's saying by proclaiming you're the Christ, the son of the living God, is he's saying there's nothing that we can do. To be right with God. It's what God has done by sending you, Jesus, for, to save us. Pointing to him. Yeah. It's exactly. all about you, big guy. Exactly. exactly. So, so the law in the Old Testament had the, uh, had the purpose of guidance. But it, all, and it also had kind of a salvation or salvific is the word. Uh, purpose in following the law would be a way for someone to be justified, right? Uh, to ultimately have eternal life. But the law in the New Testament was more of a guidance. It's more of how God, sure. he says it's, I came to fulfill it, right? right? That means you still live it out. Yeah. I am salvation. The law is no longer salvation. Right. I am salvation is what he said. And Peter got that, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. But the law is still important as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> he came, right, just like you said, to fulfill the law. Yeah, right. God's concerned what we do. Yeah. And, and, how and, we, and where we fall short, he's filled up what is lacking in our lives. Christy, so, so there was this pivotal moment that, that Marshall just brought up, right? And ultimately, after this redemption event that you're talking about, cool things happened after that, right? Matter of fact, I, I, well, hey, guess what? We're starting back. Uh, we, we're going to try. We're going to start back, coming back uh, to our campus on Pentecost right. Sunday, right? right? Talk a little bit about what happened next that really kind of cemented this, 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 I don't know, this aura that he had that Marshall brought up. Right, so... 
we all know, well, we may not all know, but Jesus ascends. He leaves. Prophetic. We know he's coming back. But then the, the apostles are left, and they gather, and more apostles are called. But at Pentecost, and that happens after Pentecost, but Jesus doesn't leave without making a promise. I'm going to send the whole, my, my spirit to be with you, to guide you, yeah. and the Holy Spirit. And on what we celebrate as Pentecost, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit descends, and Peter preaches this sermon. He's kind of the central figure. Yeah, he's the central the figure right? of all of this. Yeah. And again, it comes back to that redemption moment of here he has this revelation himself. I don't think he knew what to expect. I don't think he knew what was going to happen. And all of a sudden, this spirit comes over him, the Holy Spirit, and he begins to, to preach to the nations. Yeah. And the church explodes, fulfilling what Jesus has told him in Matthew. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that begins the church, and Peter becomes the rock on which the church is built, mm-hmm. particularly in the Jewish nation. So, so you two guys are both guys who, in terms of your ministry work and your profession, you guys just kind of roll with the punches. Whatever kind of comes up next, okay, if God's in it, I'm in, right? I mean, you, you know, we heard some of your mission work. I mean, Kevin's wearing his shirt, Global Health Outreach, right? One thing you didn't even mention, right, we didn't, is the fact that you're deeply involved in leading mission trips all over the world, medical. You're the, you're the leadership guy taking a bunch of clinical professionals to places. So, so bottom line is, you kind of just roll with it, right? And so, Christy, what you said is that Peter didn't know what to expect. Right. He just kind of had, let me, let's just roll with the punches kind of deal, Right. And, and I believe he followed what he knew to be the right thing to do after yeah. he has the conversation with Jesus. Well, yeah, he did, yeah, and he didn't know what Pentecost was going to no. be like, but he jumped in and he had this sermon that probably just came off the top of his head, right? Well, I think it's interesting that when you see Peter in the first part of Acts, yeah. you see the same Peter, except right. you see a redeemed Peter filled right. with the Holy Spirit yeah. because he's still the same brash, loud um, <laughs> speak first, think later kind of guy. I mean, here's a guy who goes before the Sanhedrin, the people who just months mm-hmm. or a month or two mm-hmm. and a half earlier had killed Christ. Right. Yeah. And they say, Peter, stop speaking or stop preaching. And he goes, I can't stop preaching. Yeah. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to leave here after you tell me to stop and I'm going to go preach in the temple. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. He goes up to a guy who's <laughs> who's lame and the guy's going please give me some gold and silver and peter looks at him and goes i ain't got no gold or silver but what i do have that's what you really need i'll rise up and walk yeah that takes some brashness that takes some ability to just speak yeah that takes some boldness yep because if any of us are walking up to a guy who's asking us for money who's lame we'll probably think twice before we say hey rise up and walk yeah but peter's that same brash loud Guy, he's just been redeemed. Yeah, and he's been filled. Yeah, that's a great. So, Marshall, come back to this. What does that mean as we see the Peter moving forward? What does that mean for us? I mean, what does that tell us? I mean, so so here's what I I, I can be skeptical. I can say, well, you know what, Kevin, I'm not that brash. I'm not that. I'm kind of reserved. I'm kind of, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, everything's got to be measured for me. Da da da. But, but Marshall, I don't know that that's a valid argument, is it? I mean, as we look at Peter, what do you think? That's a tough question. It's more of an opinion kind of thing. But what, do you, what does that say to us about the way we need to respond when God calls us? Well, I think when God speaks, it's pretty simple. When you look at the scriptures from beginning to end, to Moses, to David, to the prophets, to the disciples, mm-hmm. you know, the apostle Paul, whomever, I think the scriptures are very clear. When God speaks... He speaks with intent and with purpose, and it typically always revolves around bringing his kingdom here to earth, right? Mm -hmm. And so when he speaks, it's the duty of those who hear to respond in obedience, right? So the principle is, you know, God's revelation is our invitation 
to join him in his work. And I don't right. think that's different for anybody, to, you know, regardless of what it is. If it's speaking to somebody on a mat about getting up and walking, or if it's like the young man that came to my house last Thursday when I was prepping for the, the graduation. graduation. Yeah. yeah, and he walks up, and I've been sitting here in the Word for probably an hour prepping for Friday, and... Which was a great speech, by the way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. But it, it, was, it was amazing how the Lord used that because he walks up to my door and he's asking for money and this, that, and the other. But I was able to give him so, something that was so much more than money. And I was able to share the word of God right. and watch God begin to work in this young man's life. Good deal. You know, and so I think we always have to be cognizant of that, that, that God wants to speak to us, right? In fact, his word tells us that we can't live even by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from his mouth. So he wants to speak to us. He wants us to be nourished with his word. And he wants to speak to us in such a way that we become involved yeah, with yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's a flexibility that, that has to accompany that, right? Absolutely. I mean, it, it has to be. And you got to be able to toggle a lot of times between what, what, he might tell you now what might he might tell you at a, another point in time. Well, you know, right. Dr. Blackaby, and I'm, I know you're well aware oh, of, of Dr. Well. Blackaby, and Dr. Blackaby oh, yeah. says that, um, you know, when God invites you to be involved in his work, it will lead you to a crisis of belief, of belief. that requires crisis faith <laughs> and action, right? And so we're called to walk by faith, yeah. right? Not by sight. Yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've done that study three times and uh, experiencing God, and each time, God brought about a major change. And I said, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that study anymore. I, I think, think it, I'm I done think with it, right? I think it's time to do that again. Oh, you think, think so? You yeah. think it is? Think yeah, it is. probably a lot of people out there in integrity here. Go ahead and do it, bud. Maybe God will lead you to some, <laughs> something else. You don't have to be bothering <laughs> us. But, uh, but seriously, so, so, so kind of bringing this thing all, all home, right? I, I'm going to ask each of you, what is it? What is the singular main thing that you would want the Integrity Church family to understand about the person of Peter that we can kind of take and apply ourselves. Okay, Christy, again, ladies first, okay? Um, you might be thinking, well, you're not giving me much time to think about this, right? But, but really kind of go with your gut, what you've been thinking about. What is the singular most important thing that we can learn from the, this story and it should probably have a little bit of a redemption slant for you because that's what you said your favorite story is. That's where your, uh, that's where your, your interest in Peter really lies. What do you think? I think the idea that no failure is too big. Okay. That no matter what you've done or yeah. do, God can use you yeah. in great and mighty ways. I think we often think I can't I can't be the person I was you know as Kevin pointed out Peter was the same Peter he had always been yeah. but with redemption we often become hindered by our own failures and we become scared to do what God's called us to do okay great yeah absolutely and I think that no failures too no big. failures too big uh, wonderful what do you think, Marshall? Something that ties into what you shared with us today, but something that you would really like for the Integrity family to get a hold of. I believe that God oftentimes sees in us what we can't see in ourselves. Mm. And Peter is a perfect example of wow. that, right? Yeah. He tells him right here in chapter 16, verse 18 of Matthew, you are Petros, you are rock. And yeah. upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Peter, I don't think, saw himself that way. And I think the, the takeaway for us as believers is we need to know what God says about us, yeah. not what somebody else says, not even what we think. Yeah. Because most of the time we're wrong and they're wrong. That's but great. But God's never wrong. That's great. So, so Jesus sees in us that which we cannot see for ourselves. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, no failures too big. Kevin. Um. Well, I kind of would echo what Christy said, but, you know, more than that, Peter is a story of hope, mm. Mm. hope for each of us, Yeah. you know, um, that, you know, Peter and his humanness failed, mm. 
But regardless, there was a hope in Christ. There was a place in the body for him, for a brash, somebody who sticks their foot in their mouth, which gives me hope. (laughs) (laughs) And there was a purpose in the plan. Yeah. For him. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I just think of that, you know, we're called to be the body of Christ and we fit together. And no matter who you are, what your personality is, no matter what your failures are, what your story is, there is a place in God's plan for you. Right. And uh, and that's, um, you know, ultimately it's a story of hope for each of us. Yeah. Story of hope, purpose and plan applies to us. Right. Purpose is kind of the bigger, broader kind of thing the plan's a little more specific right yeah, yeah. And, and that's okay yeah. that's okay for us to 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 you know to to live into thing trial and error right we're not always going to get it right the first time and as we can probably all say for all of us the, the 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 answer that god directed us to is different in different stages of our lives right yes, uh, another great a point from peter is stay flexible my friend right <laughs> and stay ready <laughs> To do whatever God wants us to do, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Marshall, anything else to close, my friend? No, I think, I Great think stuff. this has been a really good study overall. I've enjoyed, uh, you know, watching you and, and uh, you know, I texted you after the one this weekend. It was really, really a great sermon. Well, so. it, was, it was fun. It was fun. I love, I love this story, just like you guys. We all share this affinity for the Peter story. But I think Kevin's right because we see so much of ourselves in him, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that gets Most back. Most definitely. <laughs> and that's what really leads us back to that hope that you talked about, right? And, uh, and the failures, mm-hmm. that, that no failure is too big. So this has been awesome. So, Kevin, would you close us out in a word of prayer and just a, a prayer of blessing over the Integrity families? We kind of try to take these points and, and really try to live, live them in our lives on a daily basis. Thank you, buddy. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we come before you, first of all, in awe. Mm. In awe that you would care enough about us that you would use us mm-hmm. yes. to spread your word, to further your kingdom, to be mm. your body here mm. on earth. Yes. You called us, and we are amazed at that. Mm. And Lord, as we have looked at this life of Peter um, over the past several weeks, This guy who, in all of his humanness and his mistakes and his failures and and everything, you redeemed. Mm. You redeemed and you revealed. You revealed who you were to him. You redeemed his his failure. And Lord, you indwelled him with the Holy Spirit. And Mm. he went on to do great and mighty things for Mm. the kingdom that, that we talk about even today that we read about and that we sometimes just stand in awe of. Mm. And Lord, you're the same God of Peter Mm. as you are of us. Yes. And you have called us to be part of the body. Mm. You have redeemed us and you have filled us with that same spirit. And Lord, help us to go out of here um, when we turn this off to to just realize that and to just think and think mm. of that and to yes. and to claim that and to live it. Mm. Lord, I know that we are excited about the opportunity that we have to be able to meet again mm-hmm. physically in the next week or so. Yes, good. And Lord, we're just going to ask that you just be with us over the mm. course of this week yep. and that you bring us back together and that we are excited to mm. worship you. Yes, God. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us, that you bless us in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Kevin, Christy, Marshall, thank you guys so much. Thank you. This is a blast. Thanks. I I know our folks had to enjoy that. I I enjoyed just having these conversations with you. It was great. So let me encourage you, uh, if you're a part of the Integrity family, to go to the, uh, again, go to the app, as we mentioned earlier, and fill out that Connect card. Let us know you're with us. Let us know on there in the comments section what, you know, you thought about today. Also, there's a Next Step section. Uh, if you made a commitment today, if there's something that you heard uh, from, this, from this film today, or something that God just might have said to you uh, in your own heart, 
uh, let us know that that happened. If you would just kind of check where it says, I'm accepting, uh, I'm, I'm accepting God's challenge today, uh, where it says that. So we'll know uh, that, that God spoke to you through this today. Also, if you would, if you're a member of the Integrity family, uh, please go to our website or uh, to our app and continue to give. Thank you so much for your support during this time of uh, revised rhythm, as we call it, and the way our Integrity family has been so, so faithful in supporting the ministry of Integrity. We, we'd love for you to continue to do that. So thanks again for being with us. God bless. We'll see you. We hope to see you on May 31st if things continue to go <laughs> as they are. Now let me say this. Not everyone is going to feel comfortable coming to campus. Can I tell you, that is totally cool. That is okay. You have to make the decision that is best for you and your family. So uh, please understand that. We love you. Whatever decision we make, we will be doing this live stream thing so that you'll be able to catch us wherever you are. And uh, we're going to be as accessible as we can be. As a matter of fact, we've had to be pretty flexible ourselves during this whole time, right? We've learned some new things. And we're still learning. We're not all getting, not getting it all right yet, but uh, we're still learning those things. So thanks for sticking with us. God bless. Have a great day and a great week ahead. Thanks.